I tried making this video a couple times last year, y'all. I recorded the video. I tried to go through editing them. Edited them. It was kind of, I was dressed like this. I had the, I woke up like this shirt on because I did my energy vampires and gaslighters videos. Go watch that video if you have the chance. Oh, wow. I've done some research on some gaslighters. So we, we could talk about that. We could, ooh, we could update on that video. But I recorded the moment that Papa Legba let his presence be known to me. I recorded a whole video on that and I never put it out. And you know what? It's for a reason because during that time span or at the months of, throughout the year, baby, I found that Oshun as well. So I have experiences with both of them. It will make me feel good if I can share whatever knowledge or experience I have, because I feel like there are plenty of misconceptions, especially amongst my people, my black people. And because I also had conversations with people where I felt like I had to like justify, which I that's so why not make a video i'm trying to gain more understanding as well because y'all already know i like my comments below and i love when people get messages and talk to me baby talk to me baby okay so let's go ahead and get into it more knowledge about him i add throughout the story because it all pertains throughout the story and things about him and characteristics stick out especially with oshun as well but i will have like brief breakdown or histories but y'all know what we all need to do pick up a book baby pick up a book google look it up there are plenty of youtube videos where they talk about african spirituality y'all look it up baby voodooism look it up but look it up proper because there are also sources out there that are a mess and wrong thank you in haitian voodoo papa legba is a prominent figure Voodoo or Voodoo is an umbrella of African spirituality that originated in different parts of the continent, concentrated specifically in parts of West Africa, such as Benin. The practice was spread throughout the world via the slave trade. It touched South America and the Caribbean and parts of North America, especially Louisiana and the Carolinas. Papa Legba is a Lua who is associated with the crossroads. He is in fact the gatekeeper of the crossroads. In a physical term, the crossroads represents directions. In the literal geographical sense, we have the compass pointing north, south, east, and west. Those four directions could also go deeper and represent the four elements, fire, air, earth, and water. All four elements are needed to create and sustain life. Also, with spiritual practices, one couldn't begin magic or work, if you will, without all four elemental components in play, be it burning incense for air, candle for fire, crystals for earth, and water being the main element because spirit moves freely within it. Through the navigation of life, one comes across many crossroads. Sometimes we're lost with the best decisions or steps to take. It could be battling between careers, what job opportunities to take, relationships, be it continuing with one you're in or moving on to something new. Papa Legba has keys on him because he literally opens doors as well as closes them for you. Before anything can be done, before a ceremony can begin, before any contact with a particular spirit can be made, one has to ask Papa Legba to open the gates for them. By offering to him, by communication and asking, he is the luau that will connect you to your loved ones and to other deities or rishas. Hence, why the crossroads also represents the point of our physical world and that of the spiritual. He is depicted as an old man with a cane or a young child. He is a father figure as well as very childlike. He is a playful and nurturing energy by nature, so he is a benevolent spirit to work with. One could offer him toys and candy or black coffee and rum. Other offerings include tobacco and a cigar, 
maybe a little green i mean <laughs> he loves palm oil i love offering him a fresh coconut every monday keep in mind monday is his day i offer him things in three since three is his number red and black is his color and his animal is the dog in media, he is a figure who is the big boss in movies such as The Godfather, which is a prominent father-like figure at the head. Even the Smurfs. Yes, cartoons tell you things. What color does Papa Smurf wear? Red. He is the only Smurf with a unique color. He is the head of the tribe. He is the wise father figure. Even in songs from DJ Khaled's I Got The Keys to Bone Thugs and Harmony's Crossroads, his energy, although at times portrayed incorrectly, dwells within the image, lines, and lyrics of the media. Spirits are energy. There are different energies and views throughout the entire world because these spirits touch different people throughout the entire world. There's going to be an original, an original creator, an original one and and, and and energies derived from that it's up to whoever to decipher if theirs is the original or not but in different aspects papa legba can also has different names such as tahuti if we can go to ancient egypt or Kemet. if you want to think about greek or hermes i always say hermes like the bag but hermes who is the you know he get the messages popping but if we want to open up the Bible, we can talk about St. Peter as well. Papa Legba is at the crossroad. If you see him in pictures, if you see the saints, if you see the ancient, the, the, the hieroglyphics, he might have a key. He's going to have a staff. He, he's going to have, might have a dog with him too. Papa Legba has the dog. Um, Luau's, they have different numbers. They have days of the week. Uh, day is Monday. Hence why on Mondays, if you follow me on Instagram, you see I will cook red beans and rice, cornbread, fried chicken because those are some of his foods that he likes. Throughout media just has portrayed us horribly, period. It's not the devil, baby. What is the devil? Who's the devil? And like, <sighs> Papa Legba is not Satan, first off, but people have seen movies where they go to the crossroads they come with a guitar, they make a deal, and then they the, the the jazz player and the blues player of the century. And at the end, they got to get a soul up to him. Like I talked about him in American Horror Story in my Spiritual Awakening video. Y'all go check that out. Please do. But um, they did have a horrible depiction of him, like taking baby souls and snoring cocaine. And I got from that at all. Not at all. He is like the messenger. He is the, the, he knows all languages. He's the linguistic person. They also call him the tricks, the two. That's why people have this, this like negative connotation. There could be that side of him, but all I know is people have been good to me. Okay, I'm, all I know is. So start from the beginning of the story of how he came to me. I ain't just see no man just pop up and I could give you a head to toe view and clear picture i'm just gonna flat out say this day this spirit they let itself be known to me up until this point i had already had a knowledge of them but there was a meeting i had about the black diaspora and people from all over the world who were of african descent would speak at like a round table discussion about different views we have of the world we have of each other it was really good conversation it was held at the african-american library uh gregory school and it was it's funny because they were coming up on their 10-year anniversary of being built 19 this is 2019 y'all because i said oh my gosh it's crazy because you know, this the 10 year, this will make 10 years. Blah, 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 blah. To before coming into the building, it was morning time and I heard dogs barking. I said, ooh, I bet this. I don't know what made me myself, what made it just me just say and think Papa Legba, but that's how I roll with my intuition. If it's the first thing that come out my mouth or mind or whatever, that's, it needed to be said. So I said, ooh, that's Papa, that's Papa Legba. I said, 
nah. But I just kept moving by my business. So after that good discussion, I left out feeling inspired. I felt, I felt enlightened. I felt great. I decided to go to the museum, African American Museum in Third Ward. It's not far from Ben's. I just went there just because I knew it was free. I like museums. So I'm like, let me check it out. I've never been here before. I get there and I did not know there was a whole festival going on that day. That's how my timing and everything works. And what led me into wanting to just go there because it was packed. I don't usually like museums when stuff is packed. I like to be when it's quiet so I can see stuff. Baby, I heard drums. And if you know me, if I hear drums, I gotta roll with it. So I go in there and beautiful artwork, beautiful setups, vendors are popping, exhibits are popping. They got it going on. There's in, in, interactive art, all of that. So y'all know I feel about them drums. So I go upstairs to see where they they are holding the drums. They're having a class, a drum set being class. And they were, I should have went in there. I should have went in there, but I was stalling and looking around and stuff. But the entrance into that building, I'll put a picture of it. There's a like a five, six foot painting of a, a gentleman in just, just dapper, just red and silk and I like the material, you know what I'm saying? I like the material. He had popping, but it was like dark and red. And it caught my eye because I didn't like his face because it looked like a caricature. It looked like um, Hollywog, oh God, is that right? Hollywogs or the, you know, the, you know, though you know how they got us looking, man, back in the day. I'm in love with this picture. But the, the way the picture looked, and this is things that stuck out about the picture that made me say, that's Papa Leg. But first off, red and black, contrasting colors. There was white and black too. That's another color play. But red and black, he just got this, this, this japa appearance about him. The salt shakers at the tables had like the same type of picture as him, but they were black and white. That, that contrast, it's all about that that contrast and color and feel and energy that's that's what sticks out that red and black stuck out he looked as if he was of abundance he had everything he had a cane he had a top hat papa level will always be walking with a cane sometimes he's depicted as an older gentleman he's gonna be walking with a a hat and a cane he also had i felt like i don't know if tobacco was in the play i felt like alcohol was there was a bucket of fish and I was like, uh, there was game. There was like, it, it was abundance. There were, if you see a bucket of fish, I'm saying like somebody got that, got that <laughs> abundance. That's what I felt like. I, I got what you need. I was like, I love this picture. I, I wanted to look up the artist. So I asked the, I think he was the main curator of the museum. Very nice gentleman. I had a good talk with him but he knew the artist of that painting. Shout out to him, and when I do find the name, I'm gonna post it up. Um, I wanted to have it correct before I started this video, but you know how that go. Uh, he blew, like, he's he's doing big things. I, I've looked up some of his work, I looked up where he at, and this brother is popping. I honest to Betsy feel like that portrait was some type of homage to Papa Labor. I'm just going, I'm going to say that. And, and I really do feel that's such a beautiful artwork. But that day I left feeling like, okay, cool. Let's, let's go. Let's great. I was on my way after leaving from that, going to pick up my son from the north side of Houston. So I'm rolling. I'm riding. I'm just like, I'm recapping on my day. I had a great experience in my culture. You know, it was, it was very fulfilling day. I'm going to check out them dates. I want to say that's around Juneteenth too. I was feeling real inspired, really. So I'm passing up Veterans Memorial and Blackpool. And, and I remember this intersection because red and black, y'all. Like black, those colors sticking out to me. And you know why? Also, because there was a red vehicle and a black Scion. I know the black, the Scion was black. This happened in front of me. This black car is in front of this red vehicle. Okay, we minding our business driving. I'm not, they not sticking out to me at all. The black car acts like, if you're familiar with the area, he acts like he wants to turn into the Whataburger that's on the left. He turns 
and then and the red car is not too close to this guy but the black car turns but then he automatically stops his car hits it in reverse comes back and allows the red car to crash into him so crazy it's like he changed his mind like i don't want the burger reverse and come back and like just wanted to just he just wanted to get ate up from the backside and causing the red car to crash hit hit him from the back and spill into the very deep ditch that is along veterans memorial which they really need to do something about some sidewalks in that area because if you're a pedestrian where are you where are you supposed to go i'm not walking in them streets I, I stopped my car there's another car that stops and i'm checking on the guys that the the family that's in the car and they're hispanic they did not know english i know the mama was i know mama was hurting the friend but she was she was okay she was a little bad because i stayed with them and called 911. So they were okay it was a it was a woman and a guy the car i was so confused as like what's going on like i checked on them too because you know y'all hit y'all caused the accident y'all caused some people to call running the ditch i mean y'all involved in the accident too so are you okay and when i came to a car and they and the guy came out it was a black guy who was driving the car it was his white wife and it was their two kids in the back a boy and a girl you know biracial and they mix and like they just it just they, it hit me. It hit me. I'm sorry. It hit me. It's the contrast. It's the con. It's the boom, boom, and the, and then the boy, girl. Da, 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 da. Keep in mind. Keep keep the boy and the girl in the back seat in mind throughout this story too, because that still plays a part throughout the night. I was like, oh my goodness, are they okay? I'm I'm concerned about the little kids, and I don't know. Daddy must have been high or some. Either the police and the ambulance handle all that later on after the fact long story short everybody got the medical attention they needed were on about their business ain't nobody you know die i was concerned about the kids in the back i don't know why the little girl stuck out to me so much she stuck out to me her spirit did her energy did i hope they are okay i hope they are I pray that they are doing just fine today but at that moment everybody was fine so to, to concur that was absolutely papa leg bump I can't, I'm shook. I'm shook right now. I'm just leaving the scene. That's police behind me going to a wreck that I just took pictures of because I just witnessed, I just, I just had to call 911 because a red car and a black car got into an accident. So everything I just said earlier about Pop, that was absolutely him. And that was absolutely him letting his presence be known. Because I just had to call and I had to... What on earth did I just witness? I'm going to get with y'all later. And I was like, okay, this, that's pop. Okay, that's pop leg right there. Okay. All right, I got it. I got you. That's some. That's somebody. Let me sip my tea. Whew. Shut up. Spear it up it up because at that time y'all don't understand the adrenaline was really pumping you didn't have no it was like okay all right all right I'm okay later that night i picked up some people and it was a boy and a girl both of them were black and white i had a good conversation with them it was a young lady and young young boy and she was like i'm giving my boyfriend that not him not him they're friends I think he was in love with her. He was very pessimistic. He did not have a good outlook on life. I don't know how we got into these conversations, y'all. Me and Uber, people want to talk. They were they weren't drunk or nothing like that. We just had they were they were some good kids. Baby boy had a bad outlook on life. The boy, her friend. It's hard for him to date. He always attracted the wrong girls. He always got negative outcomes with the girls. He didn't have no faith in nothing. He didn't believe in nothing. It don't work he got bad luck she very optimistic very faithful very deep in her faith very beautiful spirit she's giving her boyfriend three years they're coming up on their third year if he doesn't propose to her it's over when she said the number three my ears perked up and then i realized the conversation we were having and the contrast that they were she was just mind you i'm just I'm stuck in mind the little girl from the car the boy the girl they were both biracial 
boy or girl, both black and white, both biracial. I know, right? Anybody could be biracial in your car, but I'm sorry. Y'all got to take into account everything that's going on. Such contrast throughout that whole night. She was very rooted in her faith and I see how it glowed, it glowed, it worked for her. It was working for her. Him, he was very down right now. I said, baby, if you thinking that my frame is gonna stay like that, universe gonna keep throwing them girls your way. And I'm like, trust me, you cannot see it right now. But if you sit in it like she is, if you sit in knowing that you got it, if you sit in knowing that it's right around the corner, it's there to allow it to come to you, allow it to come to you. There were things he understood and things that he were doing that could kind of work on the wavelength, but it's just that that low, that pessimism, that pessimistic attitude and energy and feel that weight on him, opposed to her, just was like it's just such a good end to the night. It was it was so that was my experience with Papa Leg, but that's that whole day in itself. Um, there are things about that day that was like. Also, that played parts in it. This day when all this happened, I started my cycle. And I also had a UTI. I'm, I'm telling y'all there's too much information, but I've heard and I learned that different spirits dwell in different aspects or parts of your body. And they said that he more so, or uh, legbo or legwa, or it's more so in the, root, in the root chakra. I'm so country root. <laughs> Within that root chakra, within that, that red. So crazy. I, I'm really giving y'all all my tea right now. I really am. No choice. I ain't got no choice. Now if I, I post some of my pictures sometime on Instagram, so I ain't like this, me and my, my funny drawing ain't, ain't no secret or nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all beautiful. <laughs> so much I think of art, but. I did this long time. I started this when I was still employed with in healthcare, you know, at a job that I had. But this is when I was really trying to get an understanding of the chakras. And you know, I have another picture with Erica Badu, and this is is the third chakra. You know, we're trying to get trying to open that third eye. But with this one, um, it's so crazy. This is a picture I drew. I forgot. I almost forgot to add this in. This is a picture I drew a long time ago. I'm telling you, this is like 17, 18. If I can't think of no music or nothing to sing or something, I'm gonna figure something out to do. But this is the root, root <laughs> chakra. But I called this star seeds. I was I had a random book that I found in Goodwill about star seeds and you know indigo children and you know I y'all already know I'm, I'm out this world. I'm out this world, ho. But this picture i really hope is in frame i hope you can see you can see this the seeds throughout the picture and different things that grow throughout those seeds i have a little baby you know coming from the seed there's a, tr a beautiful tree and you know he's rooted you know it's, yeah got it <laughs> but i really um didn't even know about or, you know, I knew about Papa Leslie, but I, I didn't know about certain aspects of him. And it, and it really does, certain things just add up and make sense after the fact. Um, and I only say, I only brought up UTI because that's something that's within the area. And I randomly watched a YouTube video and this girl said she had a UTI and I'm like, but she was talking about Papa Legba and something else. I'm like, this is random. Why are you talking about that? Why am I going through this right now? Why are you talking about that? So I took that into account. And even after that, more TMI, his day is Monday. I start my cycle a lot on Mondays. If it isn't Mondays, me and the moon used to be like this, me and the lunar cycle, me and that thing on point, the full moon, I'm, I'm with it. I'm me and, me and the full moon with it. But as of late, I start my cycle on Mondays. I don't plan it that way. This last Monday, it was on the Monday. So maybe, you know, you know, maybe next time it's gonna be on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't know because I done messed around and said it, but that's just something that stuck out to me. It was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yes, I, I do, as of now, on Mondays, I do something to give service to Papa Legba, to I'm, I'm cook up something. When you cook up something, you know, you gotta feed your family. Anyway, you gotta eat. You gotta eat. Why not feed your ancestors too? Why not feed 
certain spirits to it and it's not i'm not worshiping any spirits i don't worship the orisha i'm not on my knees worshiping and giving you know but it is about showing gratitude it is about showing saying thank you or giving a heads up or what's up or just something in light for them because there are things that you can ask it's things that they can assist and help you with and there's enlightenment that i got from papa legman and i and i really do hope to continue to build some type of relationship or something i got my setup where i got an altar for my ancestors but he is the first um other spirit of the while that i have a setup for i had an altar of his um his setup his altar set up a while a little while i'm not i will say a year i could say a year or a little and uh, baby, I'm going to say this. There have been times when people weren't supposed to come in this house because I asked that for protection around this home and this dwelling and also open the door. Boo, boo, boo. Baby, there's been times people done came up and that, that were not supposed to come in this house and they did not come in this house. And I, <laughs> I feel a, 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 a calm, baby, when I do. I'm just going to say that. Ain't no bad vibes. There was... I'm going to share this experience and I hope it's okay with, with baby. If I do talk about it, I don't think so. But I have to add this experience, a, a wrap up with 2009 with Papa Labor. And this is when I was at the altar. I'm so happy I talked about the altar. Thank goodness, because this is a very good experience that I had too. When I was like, thank you for allowing me to do something. But, um... So this time it was on a Monday and you know, I cooked, did my red bean rice, sat down, whatever. A friend came over. So she was basically referred to me by my relative, by one of my relatives. So basically, and, um, I'm, and I'm no y'all, please. They, I'm not saying refer like I got the business open because they, we want to get the shop popping. We manifesting that 2020, but I got to learn before I get anything popping. I got to keep learning. <laughs> But she came to me just to ask questions about cleansing, just in general, getting a cleansing for herself and getting negative energy off her. She already sages, she does stuff, sage around the house and all that. She also has um, had certain cleanses before in the past or starting the process of certain cleanses in the past but you know, probably didn't follow up all the way, I'll say that with some of them. So she she has some knowledge of deeper cleaning, okay? Deeper cleaning than just some dove or bleach, okay? <laughs> but um, so it, it's so funny cause she came, when she came, they thought they were interrupting. And it's so funny because I was at my altar asking with my cards, with my tarot cards, I was at my altar asking about how I can step more into my divinations and really utilizing things like tarot to really get a connection, to really open doors for me with things that I want to do, like do tarot readings, which I will incorporate in my channel. And the moment I said that, that's when I heard a doot doot, and that was them, that was, you know, her coming in. I was compelled to listen to her. And then to give some type of insight, like to try to give some type of advice or whatever. But I suggest that I'm like, girl, you need a reading. I feel like you need a reading, you know, and I'm one trying to sell me. I was like, you need to maybe like speak back to your mama that know that lady that know somebody that do some get a deep reading so they could read over you and see what you need to start fixing. And then maybe they can see what specific type of deep cleansing that you can get. I gave her a general cleansing that I knew of that was um, told to me that I suggested to somebody and performed and did for somebody else. But um, she, you know, was open. She left. I went by my business and she came back. And so that's when I was like, girl, what's up? You want to get one? Let's, let's do some. I don't remember the whole spread, but it kind of laid out to her. It, she, 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 it resonated with her somewhat, but then that moon card came out. And I remember I I'm, I'm, I'm need to go back on the definition of the moon because I've been studying it a little more. But it stuck out to me at that point because I read it intuitively because at that point in time, it was a full moon. I cannot tell y'all which full moon that this past full moon was, but I was really gung-ho and excited about this full moon in particular because it was really all about, uh, the full moons period are all about 
um, it was a Friday the 13th. It was this past Friday the 13th. And, and then even though we're going to get into Oshun, I'm not having even touched on Oshun yet. But it was Friday the 13th and I will remember the moon. But I even remember I follow House of Hoodoo, but they had depictions of Virgin Mary up there. And I told her, like, just sit in it, just um, about your femininity and, and embrace it. That's what I knew. And she, um, that stuck out to her and that car stuck out to her because that Friday the 13th, or uh, not Friday the 13th, or that was the 12th. I can't remember what exact date it was. And I will write all, remember to have a caption of all of this down, but it was a day for the Virgin Mary. And we got into that subject because she brought up, I said, she brought up that blanket that she has in her car of the Virgin Mary, the Guadalupe, right in De La Guadalupe. And she expressed how she tried to get rid of it, but it, it just was there, it was on her person. And she had, I said, maybe that's, that's who you need to talk to. Maybe that's who you need to speak with or, you know, I, I, I felt comfortable saying it because up until that point, I've heard of other people who've had experiences with with virgin mary but i felt comfortable telling her she grew up i believe jehovah witness so that wasn't even in her line of you know practice or you should say but it in that moment that was an example of papa legba opening the door literally literally open the door to another to another energy, to another spirit that can guide, that can touch, that can help. And I felt so good feeling like I helped. Somebody get some insight at least. Just in, even if she doesn't set up a, a something or all the, just just know that you got just get your rosary, just get your beads, just get keep your blank, just keep her in mind, just get a little card. Just start there. Just it just it felt good connecting somebody to something. Okay, guys, we're going to either call that part one because that was very, I'm long-winded, and that was um, my experience with Papa Legba and what he, I mean, what it is, what it is. It literally opened the door for other, other, okay? And I'm, I'm, I have a setup, like I say, because I want to continue to have a connection and a guidance. I'm, I'm trying to make it myself, y'all. But it's good to know that you have assistance, another pair of eyes. You got something else by your side working with you. And that is smooth to know. So, But that's part one of that video. So y'all stay tuned for part two of my experience with Oshun. So, <laughs>